Located in West Hollywood, the Avenues of Art and Design neighbourhood has been a popular shopping destination since the golden days of historic Hollywood. Robert Brugman is Executive Director of the Avenues of Art and Design Business Improvement District. And Robert, great to see you. Glad to be here. Robert, tell us about the district and how it developed. Well, the Avenues really began organically. It, be it was a neighbourhood where uh, costume designers, interior designers, antique dealers, people sort of congregated in a sort of organic way and created showrooms and uh, fashion houses and hair salons that catered to the Hollywood elite. So over time this area became known for interior design, for furniture, um, and it just sort of created itself organically. People came together to shop and to dine and to furnish their homes. So what's the district known for then? Well, originally the district has been known for interior design, furniture, textiles, what they call shelter products that cater to people who are either designing a home or renovating their home. Um, there's been a great deal of influx also of fashion designers into this district now who are looking for alternative uh, locations than in Beverly Hills or uh, in other communities. Um, the residential feel of the neighborhood, the walking district, um, the access to the consumers who are looking at the furniture has led to an influx of the fashion as well. We also have a very prominent group of blue chip art galleries in the district and some very fine restaurants as well. Tell us about the number of businesses and the significance to the LA economy. Well, there's over 300 members of the uh, avenues currently, and uh, they range uh, from very prominent people like Phyllis Morris and uh, Ciccone's, which is the new Soho House restaurant, down to Ed's Coffee Shop, which is basically the place where everyone who works here eats. Um, the district is part of the city of West Hollywood. So the significance to the local economy uh, is um, that we generate more hotel rooms uh, usage, more sales tax, and more revenue in a 1.9 mile city than in many other portions of the city. Uh, the Bureau estimates that 1.2 million people spend over $600 million annually here when they come to Los Angeles. Has it been affected then by the economic slump? Well, you know, uh, people ask me that question all the time, whether we've been affected by the current downturn in the economy. There's still construction in the district, although certainly some members have closed, we've been gratified that other members have recently opened. So, uh, Kopeckin Gallery has come and joined the district, uh, so has Wally Findlay, which is a very prominent national gallery. They've recently opened a Los Angeles branch, and Ciccone's, which is from Soho House, has recently opened as well. So, new restaurants, new galleries, we're also going to have Christian Louboutin shoes joining us, um, which if you're looking for $800 satin shoes, I can direct you to their store as well. So, you know, in any economy, I think uh, members have to uh, do well, work hard, and we're here to assist them do in doing that. So I think, uh, like I said, we've been gratified that new members have opened. If somebody wants to find out more, how do they do that? Well, they should go to our website, www.avenuesartdesign.com or they can call me at the office and I'll be happy to give them a personal tour or put them in touch with any of the members. And that number is? 310-289-2527. Uh, Robert, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Cambrian is a non-medical home care company since 1996 with offices throughout Southern California, providing in-home services such as bathing, grooming, light housekeeping, and meal preparation for seniors, developmentally disabled, and post-surgery. Our caregivers are our employees. In the event of injury, the homeowner's insurance is not liable and no need to worry about payroll taxes. We take care of all of it. We work with many cultures and have a high percentage of Spanish speakers. Our caregivers are local and have completed a very unique training program. Our experience and dedication makes us the right choice. Call us 877-390-4300 4300 any time.
John Grimaldi's marketing career involves creating advertising campaigns and promoting more than 75 films. Some of the movies John has been involved in are Amadeus, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Midnight Cowboy, Annie Hall, and a film that was obviously dedicated to me, Rocky. John, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. You're looking well. I could be the next Rocky. You, you think? sure could. How do you go fast? Can you run upstairs? Well, actually, my knees. But yeah. That's another story. Oh, well, we can we can fix it. Movies. You've you've been involved in so many films, some of the great movies of all time. I mean, the first question is, where are the great movies? They're not there. I mean, the Rockies and these people would talk about it and talk about it. There'd be queues a mile long. They're just not there. It's it's a whole other separate interview. Mm -hmm. But if I can cut, I'll give you the Cliff's Notes answer. Certainly, the number of screens has has made uh, movies more available. Mm -hmm. I think the the cost of films uh, has escalated. I think the pressures have increased on movie studios to deliver not so much uh, artistic gems, mm. but uh, phenomenons, uh, <laughs> events. Mm. And I think that the marketing of these events um, is 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 more uh, more akin to bludgeoning consumers into the theaters than it is seducing them or persuading them or, or uh, 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 giving them a reason to, to want to go. I think that the, I think the reason that a lot of, a lot of people are going to the, going to the movies now or the fact that it, it is, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's to be a part of the event rather than see the movie. So how would you actually market a movie these days compared to say the days of Rocky and these things. Well, in the in the in the days of Rocky, you not, didn't not only did you not have the internet and and, and the and the you know 500 channels and and ET and Access Hollywood and all of these avenues, the the marketing people, the advertising and publicity people, uh, had to actively get involved in generating awareness and want to see for the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly all of those, the, whether it's the internet or, or, or any of the publicity oriented shows are certainly part of the mix, mm -hmm. but they cannot be the entire answer to the problem. But that, 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 that marketing has still got to be beyond uh, two big heads on a poster, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, from the director or the producer of yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, there's got to be a reason. I mean, the, the, what, the, as, as a marketing guy, the thing that bothers me most about mm -hmm. Hollywood marketing today is they don't tell you anything about the movie. When you... When but you maybe they can't, because... But they don't. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no... I mean, it's... it, it, it Movies are about you know, the story and characters and passion mm. and, and, and all of these things that, that uh, uh, you know, that hit, mm. you know, poke around the, the heart of the movie going public. Mm. Uh, and it has been reduced to, brought to you by, you know, or, or you know, from the director okay. of the mm. biggest movie in the world, mm. starring the two biggest stars in the world. Mm. And for that reason alone, you should go see it. And then we put a toy in with a Happy Meal, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, hopefully, we come out number one if we if we spend enough money to generate the awareness and the mm -hmm. desire for these people to come see this. Uh, now, when I, I I'm, I'm I was fortunate, uh, I think, to to be in the advertising business. My ba my background is out of Madison Avenue ad agencies. Mm -hmm when it was fun. Being in the advertising business in the late 70s, and, and I mean, I worked for the second largest agency in the world in New York at that time, it was a great time. Mm -hmm. When I went into the movie business, it was fun. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I think it, I think that reflected on everything. The, the, the filmmakers were passionate about what they were doing. I'm not sure that they're, I'm not sure that that's the that that is always the case these days. Certainly, there are some fabulous, incredible filmmakers out there. Uh, 
but the, the, the passion for storytelling and character development and, and, and affecting people emotionally uh, with, with either style, technique, story, and, 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 and in, you know, uh, uh, a personality. I mean, I mean, all of the great filmmakers had their own personality that they brought to, to films. And I think that, that all showed. So is the fun and the passion is that lacking now, do you think? I think everybody is on Tinder hooks. I think that they're afraid that the ice is going to crack. I think the business is run by money grubbers and bean counters. The Los Angeles Gay Lesbian Chamber of Commerce promotes business networking amongst its members and community. The chamber aims to strengthen and expand its member businesses, careers and ultimately their community. Randy Mulmud is president of the chamber and Randy, nice to see you. Great, thank you for having me. Randy, tell us about your chamber and its aims. Well, we have been a grassroots organization for about the past three and a half years. And uh, I was a chairman of the membership committee from last year. Uh, so I'm a new incoming president for this year in 09. And some of the plans that we have is we want to, you know, we want to attract new members to come in and just be a part of our growth. So who are your members? Our members are mostly LGBT businesses and corporate sponsors who want that diversity outreach to those LGBT businesses. You've had some major changes at the Chamber. Tell us about these changes and what it means. That's a great question. Uh, one of the things uh, with my background being a former IBM executive, I uh, really focus on how to tweak a business and what really needs to uh, be changed. So I came and I reorganized and restructured. I've put a lot of process and procedure in. So we have implemented four new committees. One of them is called the Young Professionals Council, which is basically mentoring young entrepreneurs and college students and taking them under guidance on how to become an entrepreneur and how to uh, start running a business and all the minutiae that goes along with it. The second is we put in a marketing and communications committee which is going to be handling all of our marketing, the website and our press releases. Third is a women's professional council which is going to be dealing with women's issues in the business uh, community and the LGBT community as well. And the fourth committee is our community outreach. Currently we have all these wonderful political and activist organizations out there. Now, although we are not politically an, an activist focused, we are for the small business owner and the LGBT business owner in general for products and resources. Community outreach is aligning ourselves with all those political and activist organizations such as Out and Equal, HRC, and other committees and smaller projects such as the Trevor Project as well. So what are some of the most important initiatives introduced this year and what are you hoping to achieve? Well, I would say that our import, most important initiative is to really provide value to our membership. And we're doing that through education, through seminars, webinars. We're, getting, we're promoting more of our customer base within the LGBT community and with our corporate sponsors who want to access that diverse LGBT community. We're also um, creating uh, economic stimulus packages that are going to help businesses grow. And for more information on the Chamber, how do we get that? Well, you would go to laglcc.org, which is the Los Angeles Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Go to our website. You can find out all the information, uh, membership as well. Randy, thank you very much. It was our pleasure, and thank you for having us. Blake Christian is a partner with Holthouse, Carlin and Van Trite, one of the largest CPA firms headquartered in Southern California and one of the top 100 CPA firms in the nation, as well as the fastest growing CPA firm in the region. Blake, great to see you again. Very good seeing you, Mike. This time we're talking about marketing in a down economy. Why is marketing so important right now? You've got to keep the revenue flowing and you've got to keep your customers and you have to bring in new customers. In this tough economic time, uh, regardless of the type of business that you're in, you're going to lose 
some percentage of your customers. So you need to be active out there in the marketplace, let people know you're open for business, and you have to really refine your message to make sure that they understand that they're, you can create value while they're spending money. It's, they're going to be a little, little tighter on their, uh, their wallets, and so you have to really convince them as to what you're bringing to the table. So Blake, are there some types of firms that should be considering increased levels of marketing? Well, I, I think it's really across the board that uh, any, any business in any industry right now, and actually those that are in the tougher environment, uh, automobile dealers, um, restaurants, they, you know, the tougher the situation that they're in, the more they need to be out there in front of the public. Uh, so, th so it's really across all, all industries as far as I'm concerned. And what about service providers who have enjoyed high levels of sales in recent years? Right, well, ho hopefully they stockpiled a little bit of cash from, uh, from those good years, but those that didn't um, can still, you know, refine their marketing program and, uh, and should really be out there because service businesses, it is a very personal service type relationship and so you do have to really be highly visible to make sure that you can ride out this storm. Is good marketing then necessarily costly? I think there's a huge misconception amongst business owners that that marketing and advertising requires a lot of dollars. Um, in its simplest form, I always say that you know your biz business cards are the cheapest form of advertising, and uh, I make sure my employees, whenever they're out and about, that they have a pocket full of their business cards, and uh, you you leave those behind every time you meet somebody. And again, that's just you know it's branding your company image. It's uh, it's uh, making it easy for them to contact you in the future. So that's, that's a, in its simplest form, a business card. Another cheap way is press releases. You have to have something interesting to tell the press, but there's no cost. Uh, you can develop it, you can refine the message, and get it out there in the marketplace, and it's essentially free advertising. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And what about some tips for stretching the marketing dollar? Well, what, what I'm telling clients and what we're doing as a firm is we're spending less money on, on branding campaigns and a lot more on very targeted messages. And, uh, and the focus is the cost benefit and you know, why somebody should do business with our firm rather than another firm. And that's, you know, again, I think crosses all industry lines uh, for others. And so, uh, again, the, the types of ad campaigns would be direct uh, uh, web-based advertising through Google Ads, uh, who, who you can get right to your audience. It could be sponsoring seminars so that your name's af affiliated with it because you know that that's your target market. Uh, also, very low-cost ways you can sponsor the local Little League team. Uh, also, trade journals are amazing bargains. Uh, I recently ran across a situation, didn't advertise in it, but I, I noticed that a, a national uh, Ferrari Club magazine, it cost $400 to add a full page color ad in, in getting that very high end target market. So if you shop around, you can, you can get to very high end customers without spending a fortune. And if somebody wants to find out more, Blake, how do they do that? I can be contacted at 562-216-1800 or our website is www.hcvt.com. Blake, thanks very much. Thank you. Cambrian es una compañía no médico de cuidado en casa desde 1996, con oficinas a través del sur de California que proporciona los servicios a domicilio para asistencia en bañar, cuidado personal, limpieza en casa y preparación de comida para ancianos, personas con deficiencias mentales y cuidado después de cirugía. Nuestros trabajadores son nuestros empleados. En caso de herida, el seguro del propietario no es responsable 
y ninguna necesidad de preocuparse por impuestos de paga de los empleados. Nos encargamos de todo. Tenemos un porcentaje alto de empleados que hablan español. Nuestros trabajadores son locales y completaron un programa de capacitación muy extraordinario. Nuestras experiencias y la dedicación nos hacen la elección correcta. Llámenos a cualquier hora, 877-390-4300. Carlos Galvan has held senior positions in the banking sector and is chairman of the Regional Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and the Regional Hispanic Institute. And Carlos, great to see you once again. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for having me. We're talking about access to capital. What's the situation facing businesses needing capital? Banks are still lending money, but banks are also making it tougher to qualify for that, that money. Uh, some banks have really scaled back uh, business lending, they've uh, cut back on the lines of credit, especially, and uh, it's just it's just a it's it's a tougher environment now to to qualify for for financing. So, Carlos, how hard is it then to access small amounts of funding? If the person has good credit and good cash flow, it's still relatively easy to to qualify. Uh, where where people run into trouble are people whose uh, FICO scores are not quite as high as the bank would would like them to be, and, and their cash flow is not as strong. As, as they would like, and a lot of businesses fall under that, but if, if, the, if the, the borrower is a solid borrower, good credit, and the business is making money and is strong cash flow, it's still uh, pretty easy to obtain financing. And what about tips for presenting the best case for funding? Previous to my pr current position, I was a banker. The, in banking, we have a saying, the best time to apply for a loan is when you don't need it. So obviously when uh, your cash flow is at its strongest, your, your business is making money and you don't need a loan, that's when you really should plan to uh, apply for, for, for financing and, and, and preparing yourself for funding. So what types of enterprises or projects are likely to receive favorable treatment? Re retail establishments, uh, existing businesses are what going to, are going to get the, the financing currently. New, newer businesses or startups will typically have a harder time uh, they have to provide a lot more documentation and uh, they have to pr pr basically uh, put together a business plan that shows how their business is going to succeed. So how can the Chamber assist its members? The Regional Hispanic Chamber can assist its members in, prep in, in business plan preparation, uh, putting the uh, members in front of uh, the banks and other lenders and really uh, preparing them for, for uh, uh, application of, of, of loans or lines of credit. If somebody wants to find out more, how do they do that? They can access the Regional uh, Hispanic Chamber's website at www.regionalhispaniccc.org. Carlos, thanks very much. Thank you. Cambrian is a non-medical home care company since 1996 with offices throughout Southern California providing in-home services such as bathing, grooming, light housekeeping and meal preparation for seniors, developmentally disabled and post-surgery. Our caregivers are our employees. In the event of injury, the homeowner's insurance is not liable and no need to worry about payroll taxes. We take care of all of it. We work with many cultures and have a high percentage of Spanish speakers. Our caregivers are local and have completed a very unique training program. Our experience and dedication makes us the right choice. Call us 877. 390-4300 anytime. The Museum of Latin American Art founded by Dr. Robert Gumbina is the only museum in the Western United States that exclusively features contemporary Latin American art. Located in the newly developing East Village Arts District of Long Beach, the museum has an extensive program of exhibitions and activities 
and boast elegant venues for corporate and special events. Martha Guzman is Public Relations and Marketing Manager. Great to see you. Nice to meet you. What a beautiful gallery. Thank you. Tell us about the history and the vision of the founder, Robert Gumbiner. Robert Gumbiner was a physician, and after he retired from medical practice, he'd been collecting art for a very long time since he was in medical school, and he'd accumulated so much art that there was really no more place that is home to store it and he felt that a great place to do that would be a museum and he'd actually owned this property as part of the FHP group which was a health uh, organization one of the very first HMOs and um, he had the space and so that's where he began the museum he chose this place so what's the significance of the museum to American and Latin American culture well, the mission and Dr. Gumbiner's vision for the institution was to expose the American public who might not otherwise know uh, Latin American artists who've lived and worked there since 1945 onward and just expose them to the variety of art that's there. Um, you know, a lot of people know famous names like Fernando Botero and a variety of others, but oftentimes they don't realize that there's so much art being created. They just don't realize that there's so many emerging artists as well as very established ones there so that was part of the mission and that's actually the mission of the museum to expose people to those artists that may, they may not otherwise know about. So what does the museum bring to Long Beach and its residents? Latin American culture at its best uh, because aside from exposing people to those artists that they may not know about we also hold a variety of art workshops, uh, films, festivals, there's always something going on here. Um, every Sunday is free to the public. Target sponsors those Sundays and we have a ton of art workshops for the entire family and the income, they encapsulate the art that's already here and they ba they're based on some of the art that's currently on exhibit mm -hmm. and we have music from those countries as well. Um, there's just a ton of to do here. Martha, tell us about the current exhibitions and special events. Well, currently we have two exhibitions, Arnaldo Roche, Hermandad, Brotherhood. He's a Puerto Rican artist, prominent post-expressionist artist from Puerto Rico, who's been in the art scene for quite some time, and so we're very proud to have this exhibition here. We also have uh, an exhibition by an Argentinian artist, Claudio Gallina, and his exhibition is titled Memory and Oblivion. And it's a fantastic exhibition. What it does is it brings people back to those early childhood years. And so there's even an installation that recreates a classroom. And so there's just a lot going on. We also have lectures. We'll be having a lecture uh, dealing with the art of Arnaldo Roche in the coming months. Uh, currently, we also have some art workshops that are based on some of the art that's currently on view, both from our permanent collection and our temporary exhibitions. And what other facilities are available here? We have a sculpture garden which is available for private events. We also hold a lot of our own uh, events from the museum there, both festivals, concerts, our gala. We have a gala coming up this April that will be held at the sculpture garden. We have the Balboa Room, which is a multifunctional room that people can rent out for private parties. Um, again, a lot of our events also take place in that area. And our lobby, which is available for private uh, parties as well. So how is the museum supported? It's supported through corporate and individual donors. Uh, we also have the Robert Gumbiner Foundation, which is one of our biggest donors. Um, individuals, people, just the public, and government grants. If somebody wants to find out more, Martha, how do they do that? They can visit our website, www.mola.org. Martha, thank you very much. Thank you.